Virginia's attorney general is investigating at least 12 high schools now after they delayed notifying students of their qualification for national merit awards until after the deadline to apply for college scholarships. Bill McGurn from the Wall Street Journal on the students being left in the dark on that. But we begin with Rich Edson live in Washington for us. So Rich, didn't the school district say this only happened once? Yeah, that's right, Sandra. Fairfax County Schools initially described this as a one-time human error. State officials say now it's up to more than a dozen schools that failed to notify students of their national merit recognitions. Attorney a general for the state of Virginia, Jason Mieres, and his office is investigating. He suggested the notification delays are connected to the school district hiring an equity officer and pushing equal outcomes. We believe in equality of, of opportunity, but when you have a forced uh, equal outcomes, that's where we get in some very, very dangerous areas in this country. And that's why my office of civil rights is doing this investigation to make sure there's no violation of our state anti-discrimination statute. A spokesperson for the Fairfax County Public School District denies that and says, quote, there is zero connection between equity work and the delay in notification. The consultant is working in collaboration with FCPS and the community on strategic planning to suggest a connection would be completely false. Students ultimately found out about these awards, though for many, too late to include on their college applications. The high schools say they have since notified the colleges where these scholars applied and belatedly told them about the students' awards. National Merit Scholarships are awards given to high schoolers with the top PSAT scores in the country. The program says more than a million and a half students apply nationwide. Only 50,000 of them are recognized. School principals have released essentially identical statements admitting the delays, claiming they're sincerely sorry for the error and noting that there's an investigation. Back to you, Sandra. Okay, Rich Edson on that for us. Rich, thank you. John? Sandra, let's bring in Bill McGurn, the former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush and a member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board. He is also a Fox News contributor. So this started, Bill, with Thomas Jefferson High School, which has consistently been ranked the number one public high school in the nation. They said, oh, this was a unique case of human error. Now it's up to 13 schools. Some people might say one school is a mistake, 13 is a conspiracy. Yeah, let's remember two facts. Most of the affected students, especially from Thomas Jefferson, are Asian American. And Thomas Jefferson is uh, in the midst of a controversy how it changed its admissions to admit fewer Asian Americans to make room for Hispanics and uh, black students. So there's a context for this that um, kind of belies the innocent explanations of the officials. Maybe the attorney general will find out that it's all just a bureaucratic mistake. But um, their actions so far in everything else um, uh, create a lot of distrust. Now, the attorney general who was on America's newsroom this morning did not suggest a hard and fast connection. But it did suggest that this happened about the same time as Thomas Jefferson was heavily invested in equity. Listen here. But you know, they hired an equity consultant, paid this individual $455,000 for about nine months of work. Wow. Uh, one of their directives to the school district was equal outcomes no matter what. Equal outcomes no matter what. Uh, so equal outcomes to some people is you, all, you know, a rising tide lives all boats. Uh, equal outcomes to others is you take the people at the top tier and you keep them from succeeding in order to make it look like everybody is performing equitably. Yeah. yeah. Look, let's remember what this is about. There are two distinctions in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Kids that test in the top 1 percent are semifinalists for a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Kids that test in the top 3 percent are commended students. Either one of those things you would want to have on your college application because it's an achievement. Um, and maybe on another scholarship application for a corporate scholarship or something. So some of these kids were unable to put it there. I think that's why we have an investigation. Yeah. We don't know. And it's just suspicious going from one school to all of a sudden 
a dozen. It's like the Biden documents. First, there's one document, and then they discover more and more. So uh, we hope the attorney general gets to the bottom of it. Yeah, you wrote about this in The Wall Street Journal, calling it the new structural racism. You said, in part, quote, what makes Asian American achievement so resented by our equity warriors is that it exposes as false the narrative about an irredeemably racist America where minorities can't succeed. This progressive disdain for Asian Americans is amplified by a resentment of moms and dads who believe they should have a say in their kids' education. I mean, we, we, we had a Korean neighbor of ours over for dinner on Saturday night. She had actually attended Thomas Jefferson. She is heavily invested in her kids' education as well, and she is quite successful. Yeah, and look, a lot of the kids, what are we talking about? The federal judge in a case of the emissions talks about how they discriminated against Asian Americans. That means some kids didn't get in, even though they qualified, just because they're the wrong race. I mean, that's outrageous in America today. And it's happening not just in Virginia. It's happening in a lot of places. Look, it shows that affirmative action which is intended to be benevolent and just a helping hand um, and meant to prevent uh, no discrimination, has morphed into this war where they have to um, deny Asian achievement or figure out ways to get around it and ways to kick these kids out. It's, it's really ugly. And I hope the Supreme Court looks at what's happening, not just in Virginia, but all over the country, where similar stories are unfolding. Yeah. Well, it's a great read. Your column in The Wall Street Journal. Bill, thanks for coming on to lay it out for us. Appreciate it.